Hi there. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you've heard of something called ChatGPT and you're wondering what the heck it is and how it might change life in the classroom as a teacher or within your school. My name's Valerie, I'm a digital learning leader and today I'm here to explain what ChatGPT is, what it's not, um, how it might be used and really just to open up a discussion and maybe pose some ethical questions to get you thinking about what this might bring for education. This is really a new thing. Um, myself, my colleagues are really not experts on this, but again, the purpose of this is really just to kind of raise awareness and for you to get excited about what it could mean, but also with a touch of, oh, is this terrifying or is this the best thing ever? Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about what, Jack G what chat GPT is. It's not a dating app. It is in fact a neural network based language model developed by OpenAI. It's trained to generate human like text by predicting the next word in a given sentence or prompt. And it can be fine tuned to perform specific tasks such as language translation, question answering and text completion and can be used in various applications such as chatbots, virtual assistants and content generation. Now, all of that was generated by ChatGPT. There was not a single word of that that I wrote myself. So let's jump in and talk about what this could mean for education in 2023. This is ChatGPT's website. Just Google it and you'll come to this website for OpenAI where you can just click here, create an account and it will open up the chat windows for you. Before we do that, we'll just talk about what it is. At the moment, ChatGPT is in a research preview phase and at the moment its usage is free, but this does indicate that eventually it's going to become a paid thing. You've also got a few samples where it's been used to debug code, um, troubleshoot, lots of things. And then they talk about how this is trained. So in a school, this might actually be a really cool conversation if you're running a class about AI or machine learning or anything like that. Some really useful diagrams here for you. Let's click on try chat, chat <laughs> told you. Let's try clicking on chat GPT um, and you will come up with a list of all your past chats, but you can also make requests. So all you will need to do is type your request here um, and it will generate responses for you. Okay, I have to confess, I have played along with this quite a lot. I created a backstory for a Dungeons and Dragons character. I asked it to design a recipe for a meal I was cooking last night. I've used it to debug some code for myself. I even used it to reword a couple of emails I had to send off to clients. But in the classroom, it's got some really, really unique ways that you could use it. But as a teacher, you could probably use it just for your planning and your admin, but also in the classroom. So we'll focus on those and I'll show you a bunch of examples. The first cool thing I got it to do was write me a four week teaching program for year eights in Australia on how to use Microsoft Excel. So I could have been more specific here. I could have asked it to be uh, a certain number of lessons per week. I could have asked it to include particular skills, but I left it really open and really, really, really vague. So I stopped the generated response partway through and I actually redid my prompt and I asked it to give me some specific lesson by lesson plans to see what it could come up with. And I've sped the video up here so that you don't have to wait around for ages. But as you can see, it's given me detailed lesson by lesson plans, which you could alter, but they all look like fairly decent double lessons to me. At this point, I thought I would see how it would go with writing me a task sheet. So I asked it to write me a task sheet for an assignment on one of the points under lesson number three. And I just copy and pasted that in there and it has done a pretty good job at creating a step-by-step -step set of instructions that students would be able to follow. And then at the end of the response, it also allocated marks uh, because I asked it to make it out of 30 to each of those types of criteria which is pretty cool. Um, and I, I guess this is awesome because I didn't really have to do anything myself. I wouldn't use it right away in the classroom, obviously check it, but it's really cool for generating some ideas. And if you don't have any colleagues around to ask, it could be really, really helpful. 
Now I did have to experiment a bit with rubrics, but I found that if you ask ChatGPT for a detailed rubric, including capabilities and descriptors at the A, B, C, D and E levels, then it would actually generate a full rubric. If I didn't go to that level of depth, it didn't actually give me a full table. So here you can see me going back and altering and then saving and submitting and it regenerating. Um, and it came up with just the objective again, kind of as though you would have it in a task sheet, but then it does go through and generates a full on rubric for you, which is pretty cool. It then at the end goes on to include some points to sort of say, okay, well, maybe you could assign points to each of these things or use percentages or use this to calculate a final grade. But for me, this is pretty insane because I don't know about you, but I have spent a long time writing these descriptors for each of these levels, for each of the capabilities. It could save us a lot of time. In case you haven't picked up on it, I do love maths and science. At the end of teaching a statistics unit, one of my favorite things to do was get students to complete an assignment about something that mattered to them whether that was a hobby, sourdough making, equestrian, going hiking, whatever. But it was really difficult for me to find the time to go around to every single student and help them identify where statistics might apply in that situation for that student. And to chat GPT, this would be a game changer in my classroom. Instead of that annoying scenario where some students don't even know where to start, I'd tell them to ask chat GPT before they asked me. Recently, I've got into baking sourdough, so I asked ChatGPT how statistics can be applied to sourdough baking. It gave me a list of options, which is really, really cool. And if I was writing a maths investigation or coming up with an assignment, I feel like this would be a really great starting point. We've all been in the situation where we had to write a difficult or uncomfortable email to a parent when maybe a phone call wasn't available. Here I asked it to write me an email to a parent who was disgruntled because their child had not made the A grade rowing team. ChatGPT gave me a really good starting point for my email back and it was really politically correct, quite sensitive and it was solutions focused. I was really impressed by this. These were just some of the ideas that we came up with. And really the only limit is your creativity and playing around to figure out exactly what prompts you need to give it in order to get the response you want. Some other ideas we came up with were generating science experiments, helping us write test questions with a certain number of marks allocated. And then even when we asked them to make a slightly harder version of a question, it gave us a few options, which was really cool. We also thought that if you were teaching a subject for the first time and you needed clarity on a concept, you could ask it to explain concept X like you were five and it would do a really, really good job of it. ChatGPT does have a limitations section that you can read about in more detail on its website, but I'm going to summarize a couple of limitations that are really obvious. Number one, it's not connected to the internet. So that means that it was fed a set of data a few years ago and all of its responses are based on that knowledge base. This means that it can't tell you the time, it can't answer questions about new discoveries and it definitely can't tell you who won the World Cup. Second of all, it's really sensitive to tweaks in your input phrasing. So this means that you'll have to play around a bit to get the output that you want. And third, while there are efforts for the model to refuse inappropriate requests, sometimes the model does respond to harmful instructions or exhibit biased behavior. So it's not perfect. And I guess it does have the potential for some malicious use. It's probably time to address the elephant in the room. Are kids going to use this to cheat? Is it going to do more harm than good? Is this exciting or is it terrifying? Well, this is what the education industry is saying. I'm fully aware that this video could be out of date in just a couple of months. This is the opinions, I suppose, or the discussion in the education community as of January, 2023. We can see that New South Wales has restricted the use of ChatGPT in public schools ahead of the first term starting. And some Queensland public schools have decided to join this. There's a university lecturer at Deakin who has detected one fifth 
of assessments uh, using AI. And basically, there is also something called um, AI Cheat Check, which is now being created, which is another AI, also currently in demo mode, um, which is another way that people can check. This article I particularly like because it also talks about the fact that it could be a huge opportunity. It could really help kids with language backgrounds other than English, culturally and linguistically, refugee kids. It could also help kids who maybe struggle in a classroom environment. It could help parents who homeschool. There's a lot of potential here as well for good. Now, in true spirit of this chat GPT video, I actually asked it to write me a summary of the views posed in those four articles, and this is what it came up with. Pretty impressive, right? Now, I did say before it's not connected to the internet, so I think it actually generated that based on the titles in the URLs alone. I was really curious to try out the AI cheat check tool, so I copy and pasted the text that was generated by ChatGPT, and as you can see, we got a 100% result. I do wonder how reliable it is, but I also wonder whether maybe this is just another tool for services like Turnitin. The purpose of this video is really just to start a discussion about the potential of this futuristic new tool in schools. There's always been a lot of talk of AI coming to take our jobs and we've always felt pretty safe as teachers. Now that's probably still the case, but as we've seen, this tool does have the potential to support us as educators and we need to think deeply about how. So I would like to leave you with some points for discussion. How do you think the parents in your community might react if they knew that you were writing their child's report comments with AI? Don't lie, I know that you thought about it. Does this mean that we will need to rethink assessment, rethink feedback? Would you feel comfortable if your students asked for feedback on their writing from an AI before submitting to you, rather than asking it to rewrite or paraphrase? Does this mean that a greater level of consistency could be reached in moderation of student assessments in written tasks? Is it just a fad? Are we even going to care about this in three months time? Does this mean that our curriculum needs to change so that we have these ethical discussions with our students ahead of time? Does this technology have the potential to even out the playing field for our disadvantaged students? And what other creative ways have you already thought of that you could use this for? For me personally, I thought I'd ask it to write me a rap song about how beautiful maths is. I did toy with the idea of trying to wrap this for you, but I'll spare you from that and just show you how cool it is. Mass is beautiful. It is in fact more than just sums. <laughs>